Hi, and welcome back to The Real Hub TV. I'm Chantal Grayson, and today we're going to be covering pages two and three of the URLA, which stands for the Uniform Residential Loan Application. This is the most common application used in the United States, and it covers loans for properties from one to four units. Anything over four units is considered commercial real estate. So let's get right into it. But if you missed page one, be sure to watch that video that I posted so that you will be up to date. Page two starts off as a continuation from the end of page one. Section four, employment information continued. So if you are employed with more than one employer, this is where you can add additional employment information your name and address of the employer, whether or not you're self-employed, the date range that you've been at this particular job, and your monthly income, the position that you hold, and the type of business. If you have another job, you will add that here and keep going until we get to the end. Now, if you have a co-borrower on the loan, this is where you're gonna add the name and address of their employer, self-employed, date ranges, monthly income, position, business at phone number, including the area code. Repeat. Section five, the monthly income and combined housing expense information. Notice how this section is a little bit different than the previous section. In this section, we have the borrower and the co-borrower right next to each other instead of side by side. So here we have the gross monthly income, your base employment income for you and the co-borrower, then you'll total them. Overtime, bonuses, commissions, dividends or interest, net rental income and other income. Again, in this column will be for the borrower and this column will be for the co-borrower. Then you come over to this side. Again, here you're gonna be listing the combined monthly housing expenses. So this is where you add up your housing expenses and your co-borrower's housing expenses and you put them here. So if right now you guys are living separately and you have two separate rents, this is where you need to put both of your rents. First mortgage, other financing, hazardous insurance, real estate taxes, mortgage insurance, homeowners association dues, and other. This is where you will add those up. If you currently do not have a home, but you know that you're about to get a home, this is where you're gonna put the proposed amount for your first mortgage, your hazardous insurance, your real estate taxes, your mortgage insurance, your homeowners association dues, and any other expenses. You'll put them in this column and remember this is a proposed column so they'll still be able to add up your DTI which means debt to income ratio. Now let's describe some other income that a lot of people forget when they're filling out a loan application or they forget to tell their loan officer. Alimony, child support, separate maintenance income need not be revealed if the borrower and co-borrower does not choose to have it considered for repaying the loan. Again, this is very important. Some people need to report the alimony and child support in order to qualify for the loan. But if you feel that you will not need it to qualify for a loan, then you do not have to put it. I also wanna make sure you guys see this little asterisk right here. Self-employed borrowers may be required to provide additional documentation such as tax returns and financial statements. Financial statements are things like bank statements, profit and loss statements. Going on to section six, assets and liabilities. The thing I love about this section right here is that once your loan officer pulls your credit, they generally can take the information directly from your credit report and it will automatically fill in this section. But if it doesn't, what this section, section number six, is asking for in your assets and liabilities is that you write down your assets, a description. So cash deposits towards purchase held. So for example, how much money do you have in your checking account? You would put that here. Um, now it says list checking and saving accounts below. Name and address of bank, 
savings and loan or credit union. You're going to put that in this section right here. Account number. How much money is in that account? If you have another account, you repeat the same information, the name and address of the bank, savings and loan or credit union, the account number, and how much money you have in there and repeat. Here, you're going to go over to your liabilities. Your liabilities are going to be the name and address of the company. So a liability could be anything from a revolving charge on a credit card, a real estate, alimony, child support that you have to pay. So if you had to pay child support, you would put the child support agency that you pay to, your monthly payments, and your unpaid balance. Now, unpaid balances are really important because, for example, if you have an automobile loan, let's say Toyota Financial, you're going to write Toyota Financial in this space. Your monthly payment is $400 and you owe five more months of payments. Well, and here you'll put your unpaid balance. A lot of lenders, when there's a loan that has 10 months or less, they can choose to omit that liability, which means not count it towards your debt to income ratio because you only have a few months left of payments. That concludes page two of five of the Uniform Residential Loan Application. Now let's get into page three. Again, this is a continuation from page two. As you see, it's still number six, assets and liabilities, because some people have a lot of assets and they have a lot of liabilities. Luckily, most of the times when you have your credit report run, the liabilities are automatically just moved over into here so you don't have to fill out all of this section. So let's continue. Here you would add another bank, savings or loan or credit union, your account number, the amount of money in there, any stocks and bonds that you own and the amount of money that you uh, have in there, your life insurance, the net cash out value and the dollar amount would go here. This is where you would subtotal your liquid assets. Real estate owned, intermarket value from schedule of real estate owned. Most of the times when you file your taxes, if you're self-employed or if you're employed, uh, a W-2 wage earner, your other income will be on a Schedule E. So your Schedule E most of the times lists your rental income, which you'll put here, your vested interest in a retirement fund, your net worth of a business owned, attach their financial statements. And like I told you, most of the times that's a PL. Automobile owned, make and year, and other assets. Then you have to add up this entire column right here, including the column on page two. And this is where you're going to get your total. That will go right here in the total section. Going back over to this column, here are your liabilities. So the, again, the name of the company that you owe money to, the dollar amount and the month, amount of months left over. And remember I told you it's really important to put the amount of months left over because if it's normally 10 or under, a lot of lenders will choose to omit that. And the dollar amount, your account number, etc. keep repeating, right? Alimony, child support, separate maintenance payments owed to. This is where you, if you happen to be the one that has to pay the alimony or the child support, this is where you write how much money you pay out every month. The dollar amount, job related expenses, child care, union dues, etc. You will put that here. Then you will add up all of this section, including the one on page two, to get your total liabilities. Okay? Moving down, schedule of real estate owned. Again, this is almost mimicking the section E of your tax returns. So you'll write the name of the property address, right? Um, whether it's a rental, that's super important. The type of property, whether it's single family residence or multifamily. So multifamily is anywhere from one to four units. And remember, I told you this application is only good for the uniform residential loan application. Residential in the United States is one to four properties. Anything over four units is considered commercial and you would not be filling out this application. Present market value. There's so many um, apps now that you can go and put in your property address and it will give you an estimated property value. The amount of the mortgage or lien, your gross rent, which is at the end of the year, you count up all of your rents and you put that number here. Mortgage payments, insurance, maintenance, and taxes, 
and then your net income. Moving on down, list of additional names under which you have credit previously been received or indicated appropriate creditor names and account information. This is super important. When we run your credit as loan professionals, sometimes it'll have your, your name, the same name that's on this application, but then it'll have other names. So if you've ever used a married name and now you're divorced and those names show up, but you still have creditors in that name, then you need to go ahead and list your alternate name, the creditor that you have under that a name and the account number. So for example, my name is Chantal Grayson, and let's say if I were to get married, then I would put whatever my married name is here, and then the creditor name that I have under my married name and the account number. Okay, going down to section seven. Section seven is detail of transactions. So purchase price. This is where you're gonna talk about the home that you're currently getting. So the purchase price of the home you're trying to get, um, altercations, improvements, or repairs, land, refinance, estimated prepaid items, estimated closing costs, PMI, right, just private mortgage insurance, um, MIP, mortgage insurance premium, and funding fee, document, uh, discounts, I'm sorry, document, H, discounts, if the borrower will pay, total. So basically, this is the information more than likely that your loan officer is or loan professional is going to fill out because sometimes you may not know what these different items are. Section eight, declarations. This is where you're going to declare, you're going to state whether something is true or false or yes or no. If you answer yes to any of the questions A through I, please use continuation sheet for explanation. A. Are there any outstanding judgments against you? Yes or no? Your co-borrower, yes or no? Have you been declared bankrupt within the last seven years? Yes or no? Have you had property foreclosed upon or given title or deed in lieu thereof in the last seven years? Yes or no? Are you a party to a lawsuit? Yes or no? Have you directly or indirectly been obligated on any loan which resulted in a foreclosure, transfer of title in lieu of foreclosure or judgment, yes or no. Hello, Grayson, and thank you so much for watching The Real Hub TV. This was page two and three of the URLA, which stands for the Uniform Residential Loan Application, or the Fannie Mae Form 1003, or the Freddie Mac Form 65. In my next episode, we're gonna end it with pages four and five. I told you guys that this was a pretty long application and that's why I decided to break it up into several videos, but it is very important that you know what is on the 1003 so when you get ready to buy your first home or a piece of investment property, you know exactly what the mortgage professional will be looking for. So don't forget those three C's and the DTI. And if you like what you heard in this video, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell. I'm Chantal Grayson, a licensed real estate and mortgage professional in the state of California, where we're gonna talk about everything from buying, selling, investing, and of course, mortgage finance. See you soon, thank you.